Hello everybody, how you doing today? It's Superfiend here and welcome back to our Total War Three Kingdoms playthrough as Sun Sa for a World Betrayed, the latest Total War Three Kingdoms content pack from Creative Assembly. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you've been enjoying this campaign, and I hope you are as much as I am, uh, this may turn out to be one of my best campaigns ever. Things have gone remarkably well over the last few episodes. Uh, unless it's hard-coded by Creative Assembly, and as of right now, all indicators are that it's not at the time that I'm recording this. I think we may just uh, get our luck all the way back up to that next little marker here, where we have 40% campaign movement range and minus 15% retinue upkeep, minus 15% retinue upkeep, faction-wide, and then the military supplies, and then we don't care about the reckless luck anymore. I mean... Sun Sua, Sun Sa, sorry, I was corrected on my pronunciation, so I'm going to now try to switch over to Sun Sa. Uh, he could live to a ripe old age. He's only 24. We could have him for a long time. Now, I am expecting, although I don't know, but when he dies of old age, if that's how he exits this campaign, will we still keep the reckless luck like mechanic, if it goes all the way up, will it still be there or is it tied to him being alive? That is a question that I don't yet have an answer to. Also, real quick, real brief, before we dive into this and then we're gonna have lots of fun. Uh, if you've been enjoying this campaign and you really do think this could be one of the best Suns uh, uh, playthroughs you've seen as of yet on the YouTubes, I would really appreciate it. And if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I would really appreciate it if you go back to episode one and just leave a little comment about like, wow, this is a good campaign. If you're finding this in search or whatever, you should watch it if you wanna see a good campaign. And and I don't ask for this very often. I just think this campaign is a good campaign. And if there was a lot of support on that very first episode when people land there from search results and recommendations, it might help to, um, uh, well, just get me some extra viewers, a little bit extra at watch time and stuff. That's all important stuff for the YouTube thing. And I don't like to talk about that very often. I usually don't. If you watch my videos, like I've recorded 90 videos at least without saying anything about that. So it's not something I do very often. Okay, now we're gonna dive right into it. Sorry about that. That was two and a half minutes longer than it should have been. Let's go ahead and we need to finish off. Uh, their name now is Li Ming Yang. Li Ming Yang. Um, our replenishment's pretty good. So I kind of feel that I, you know, I'm just going to force marches. I'm just, we're going to get right on top of them before they have a chance to recover. And then boom, bada bing, they're out of here as a faction. We are building up here. We are building over here. What is this? It's a mail post. So a little bit of income from commerce. Poyang is being upgraded. So we'll have the walls. And I had a thought uh, before I started recording, I looked through here. We kind of have uh, low public order. And right now, while we only have one standing army and we're not really earning a whole ton of money from uh, the commanderies that we do have, might be a good time to go ahead and look at this. 32, 46, and six food. And we just bump our taxes down and we only lose like 400 income and five food. And you know what? Look at what it does for our public order. This might be a great time to do this and get the positive public order bonuses. So you know what, I'm gonna lower the taxes as well. Do I have tax exemption here or? No, this is, okay, yeah, Lu Jiang. Uh, someone recently left a very long comment. I love it, it was a great comment about Lu Jiang. And it's a few episodes back where they left it. And about how I should like kind of, at that point in the campaign, try to dump this thing. And I really can't dump it, but now it's kind of turning into like we might actually be able to keep all of this. And that's another reason why I think this might be one of the greatest unsub playthroughs on YouTube is because we've managed to rebel against Winshu, defeat him in battle, uh, turn him into somebody that funds our efforts down here in the south. We've kept the starting commandery, the starting city that we took. We still might be able to come over here and get Lu Jiang just from the Han Empire, you know, without having to declare war on anybody else. Our reckless luck is increasing. I mean, we might eventually be able to build this up and this could be like our little foothold across the Yangtze River. Uh, I do probably want to move the capital down here though to maybe like Sindhu or something because it's up in the mountains. It's hard to get to. I think that'd be 
a good idea, but it's expensive to move our... Whoa. Isn't this normally only like 5,000 or something? It's 15,000? Okay, that's not happening anytime soon. Uh, but we may we may build up Lu Jiang and then move our capital down here at some point. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. For now, we're focused on this. Uh, how long until we get a reform? Four turns. And what is our next reform? Just reminding myself here. Oh, it's a lovely 15% campaign movement range. I love it. We're going to... Oh, my gosh. We are going to be able to move 55% farther. Just base without any ancillaries or other stuff. So 55% uh, with this guy leading is... 80% farther, 80% farther for all of our armies that have reach. And then you throw in like an ancillary or something that grants like, you know, plus five or something. We are going to be able to cover so much territory, so much territory. Uh, we also, we have a skill point here, like militarily being able to move far in some of my other campaigns would have saved me so much headache. And this campaign it just looks like we're going to be able to do it. It's going to be absolutely incredible once we really get going with it here. Let's go ahead and get patience so that we can uh, capture people, I guess, and ransom them off. And uh, I think that's kind of it. I was looking in here, too, before I started, just to refresh my memory. Uh, Sao Sao, Yu, Pei, Pei Chin, Wenshu, and Liu Bao. Those are like our big traders. Sao Sao, Yu Pei Chin, Wenshu, and Liu Bao. Of course, when I need that information later, I'll have totally forgotten who they are. Uh, but I called attention to it now, so you could complain at me in the comments once I forget, if you'd like to. Liu Yao, we will sign that. No, <laughs> no, we will not. We're going to take your stuff uh, soon. Uh, I did also say at the end of last episode that we're going to come down here and then swing back towards Liu Yao. Um, and we may still do that, but I think I might come over here and just clobber uh, Xu Zhao first since we're already over here. I might. I don't know yet. Wen Xiao signed a peace treaty with Zhang Yang. Wen Xiao signed a peace treaty with Zhang Zhengba. Zhang Jiang signed peace treaty with Zhang Yang. Zhang Yan declared war on Wenshao. Okay. Ancillary gain. It's an eavesdropper. And Tai Shi Chi is getting ready to come home. I think it's Tai Shi Chi. It, it could be Tai Shi Chi. I'll, I should go double check after, after I record this. If I can remember. Okay, and then we can't build anything yet. Uh, income did drop a little bit there. Did we lose anybody? I'm just going to check every time. Sao Sao, Yu Pei Chin, Li Bao. We did, right? Somebody dropped out. And see, I already can't remember who it was. Sao Sao, Yu Pei Chin, Li Bao. Yep, I already forgot. Wen Shao? Was it Wen Shao? Uh, well, we didn't get any extra food back, so I don't think we were trading food, right? We still only have one surplus. We have non-aggression at military access with so many people. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we had made a trade with you. What was it for? He doesn't want to become my vassal. That's that's strange. I'd be a great person to exist under. I really would. And but he doesn't really value much right now. Let's go to quick deal. I don't have any extra trade agreements. Create a vassal. Nobody's interested in that. Now, one thing I don't know is if you vassalize these regions, does it fulfill the legacy of Wu stuff? I don't think it does. Uh, let's go find one that's not complete. 
because it says capture or have at the start of your turn, Poyang Iron Mine, and it doesn't have any extended text for, you know, or occupy via vassals or military allies the way some of the Warhammer 2 tooltips do. So I don't think vassals count for that. We're going to make it. We've made it. Oh, they're in big trouble. Night battle. Yeah, we're just going to delegate. And now this, I think, secures the supplies or secures the provisions as far as our Legacy of Wu objectives are concerned. Secure campaign provisions. No army can march on an empty stomach by controlling Kwai Ji, the realm's breadbasket. They could march forever. So now we have an additional plus two reckless luck per turn. Changing by three per turn now. Agriculture buildings cost constru or construction cost reduction. 20% cheaper. Faction destroyed. Fourteen hundred could be a little bit pricey. Uh, this is almost done. So looking even better here. Rapidly, rapidly going up. I love it. I really do. Still looking okay. Oh, and we're we're actually upgrading this. Really, I decided to upgrade it. Okay, well that's fine. And so now let's talk strategy. What would be the point of coming over and getting this salt mine uh, before we get anything else? And the reason would be the reason would be this army and the garrison cannot defeat. Sun Swa. No chance. Absolutely no chance. We're still waiting two turns over here for Po Yang to get walls. We have, if I remember right, you know, all the like decent sized garrisons in the weapon craftsmen and other stuff, right? So what I'm thinking is is by the time we come over here and get the salt mine and you know get them out of here. That's going to give us enough time to do building upgrades and things over here that we need. Ooh. Uh, maybe we'll do a little side adventure and go squish this. Because there's a, I think there's a salt mine down here too that we could take. Or maybe even sell to Yan Bai Hu for a whole pile of money and just build up this stuff more. Uh, in any case, swinging over here to attack Xu Zhao is going to allow us to build stuff up. And then our economy, when we put our taxes back up, should be strong enough to recruit an army here. Recruit an army here. And Sun Sa and his army come over and they just lay siege here and starve them out while the army over here fends off Liu Yao and the vassal here uh, with, our, with our garrison. You know, we got the administrator and then we put a standing army here, maybe in an ambush stance or something. And... That's probably the fastest way to take out Liu Yao and his two vassals. And so I think that's what I want to do. Uh, but I am kind of tempted to just come over here. I wish I could see further. Like, who will this show me? No, that's Hu Gan. Yell Turban Rebellion. Uh, we might we might just go squish this real quick. Mm, no, you know what? I'm going to come over here and fulfill this first because fulfilling the legacy of Wu is just going to put us in a better position overall than taking this and either keeping it or selling it to Yan Bai Hu. And Yan Bai Hu is not even here anymore. The faction previously known as Yan Bai Hu is now Yu Pei Qin. One of the people we are getting money from. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how long we're not aggressive with you. And also, let's go check the court. Lai Jue is in here. Tempting to recruit him, but he's old. He's going to die soon, so I don't want to spend a 1000 on that. Uh, if we could get a decent commander somewhere in here, that might be worth uh, recruiting into the army, but 
Uh, so far, no commanders have presented themselves. Oh, this is Lady Sun. Duh. Okay. God, I'm stupid. So I was looking in here and I was confused. Someone's probably called me out on it by now. Um, no, where is it? Okay, hold on. Yep. Yep. At the start of your turn, have Lady Sun be rank five or higher. And for some reason, I was like, oh, is that Lady Wu? Did they make a typo? Are they confused? And the answer is no, I'm a moron. I'm that's Lady Sun, right? That should be Lady Sun. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's all we can do right now. So our next step now is to go crush Xu Zhao. Young Fang. Where are you? I wish there was like a way to like just zoom to them on the map, like clicking on his big head here or something. Anyway, where where are you, you bugger? Where's your where's your outline? I don't see it anywhere. I can't remember where this guy is. Uh, but he's he's pretty weak anyway, so why would I go through with that, right? Doesn't make any sense. Why are you bothering me? Okay, Sao Sao signed a peace treaty with Zhang Yang. Kong Grong signed peace treaty with Wen Shao. Zhang Yang signed peace treaty with Kong Feng Jin. She actually became a character, I, I think. Pretty sure it's her. In my Yan by Who playthrough, uh, her faction got destroyed and we picked her up. Coming of age, Sun Chuan. Sun Chuan. Finally. And we have several buildings are done. Okay, so Lu Jiang. 2700. I can afford this. No problemo. No problemo. I can afford that. Okay, so let's go find our faction heir. Plus one available assignments, plus seven satisfaction. Effects from Sun Chuan in this post. 25% campaign movement rage starting in friendly sea regions. Wow. Wow. Now, is that going to get... Uh, that should not get any better as we give him experience. That's just from him specifically, right? Okay. He has married Da Chao. And so he is supposed to marry the other Chao sister, which is going to cost 4000 of our money. No, no, no. 2000 because I'm choosing. Hope you get along. Okay, there we go. And Sun Ren is 11, so it's going to be a little while before Lady Ren is available. Uh, we have a marriage. Good job. We have skill points. Skill points, skill points. Plus, ooh, plus 50% income from family estates. Wow, that could really boost up income a bit. Well, I mean... I think that's this, the other. That's that's not worth having Sun S S not as our faction leader. Okay. Can I give you a title that affects the whole faction? Are there any titles that affect the whole faction? I have no idea. So let's go just check this out. Let's see. Are there any titles 
that benefit the whole faction. If there were, I would expect them to be expensive, like 400 per turn. Plus five diplomatic relations with Han Empire factions. Win 10 battles against factions belonging to the Yellow Turban subculture. Five percent melee damage faction wide. General who smashes the Kaitiffs, Kaitiffs. So there's a couple of them, but and they're okay, but so far they're not like so absolutely stellar that I feel this incredible urge to pursue them immediately. So then we'll just go ahead and look over here. More satisfaction, faction wide. It also provides cunning, which is not for him, but whatever. Uh, he's authority based. Let's see, yeah, we'll we'll boost up his authority. Now, if we get him up to a hundred and sixty, he could be the character that boosts uh, in here. He could become the grand master that we're looking for. Grandmasters, so at the start of your turn, have a character with 100 or 60 or more in authority. So he's he's almost there. We have another um, commander in here that's close, uh, but he could also be. He could also be. Have two rank five or higher commanders, so he could be one. He could also be this one. At the start of your turn, have a rank four commander or champion who is 18 to 30. So that will enable turtle and melee damage for melee infantry, increase in melee damage for melee infantry. So let's go ahead in here and if we can, I think these are the ones that increase authority. We're the ones that are going to increase his primary stats. So we have that. We have that. Uh, instinct and faction support plus five. Ignore forest penalties, 25% chance of avoiding ambush. Uh, melee armor piercing damage on army, melee attack rate. Yeah. He only gets one point, huh? Well, I know just what to do about that. Blurp. Boom. And we're a couple turns away from getting this again. Okay. And then uh, we'll maybe just go this way, I guess. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use that on him, but he seems good enough. And so now our satis satisfaction should be really good. Yep, looking a lot better, which is great. Uh, character salaries are still uh, quite high. And it's time for us to move. I've done all of that while just sitting in town being lazy. Let's double check and make sure that I don't have any um, outstanding agreements with you. Wei, Shan Yu, that's this faction up here. Okay. One turn, one turn. Oh my gosh, look how far we can move. I mean, look at how far we can move. This is insane. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything in here by chance that gives like five or 10% campaign movement range? No, not right now. Okay. And then we have our buildings. So since I can afford this, I'm going to go ahead and build that now. 
And then we're going to go ahead and send people back on assignment. Yeah, Taishi Chi. Oh, he's in Kwa Jai. Uh, Cheng Pu, but he doesn't get along with Zhao Tai. Well, you know what? Figure it out for a few turns, okay? Just get along for now, please. Please. And then this is where we have our next upgrades. So at what point do we get a better garrison? Here. You cannot construct this building before first constructing buildings earlier in this chain. And right now we also have um, reduced construction costs, construction for, for um, agriculture. And we have it for him being here as well. Uh, do I have a new administrator slot? Not yet. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the rice patties because it should be ultra cheap comparatively to other options that we have. Uh, fishing port provides food. So eventually we're going to increase our food production in here. But right now our food's okay and we are building the rice patty or whatever it is. This requires tea, and in my Winshu campaign, when I lost trade and lost tea, uh, all of the grand tea houses absolutely crushed my economy. So I'm going to go ahead and build this one. And that's going to use up most of our money. There you go. Public order is on the rise. Effects from total population growth. Okay, so we'll we'll adjust our taxes in a moment. And I'm happy with the way this is going. I'm incredibly happy with the way this is going. Su Shao has declared war on us. That's perfect because we were coming over here to do the same exact thing. Wow. It's like they could read my mind. I hope they don't have a second army over there. Xi Ying Xiu requested their master at Liu Bao go to war against Wen Shu. Su Shao declared war on us. Alliance of Zhang Ba declared war on Yellow Turban Rebellion. Legacy of Wu, next generation. To secure the dynasty's future, one must find capable generals before their talent is noticed by others. So now we have for a turtle formation and plus five melee damage for melee infantry. Cool. Another eavesdropper. Why are we getting so many of those? Small city in Poyang is done. Will this increase our garrison? At what at what point does the garrison get better? Not until there. Okay. It's 960 and one turn. Versus what? Uh, you know what? We're gonna we're just gonna do the garrison. Just get it done, get it over with. That's a handful of turns there. Boo, we have insufficient funds. Uh, so next turn, we should have plenty of money. This is probably the most ill-advised war declaration I've ever seen. Uh, how's our supplies? Let's go ahead and starve them out. We might be able to demand a surrender. Let's try it. What a shocker. Okay. Alright. Oh, and then once more. 
Our supplies are good. Uh, we've got a little bit of food back, which tells me that some of our food trade has ended. That's okay. I'm going to keep our food for ourselves briefly. Because we are about to acquire a uh, city up there. Go away. Not going to cooperate. We're going to we're gonna acquire the city here. Uh, we'll also get this fishing port at some point. And then I don't know what's going to happen with Hua Xin. They did not attack us here, so they're just going to starve to death. An exquisite weapon from our weapon craftsmen. A war blade. Expertise. Now, reduce military supplies of local enemy armies. Garrisons are the same. One increases reserve capacity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this one. So anybody that comes charging through here, Stormin, Norman style, takes lots of attrition. And then let's go ahead and build this. Takes one turn. Cool. Not going to spend any more money. Uh, we could probably increase our taxes a wee bit now, which is going to give us even more food. Now, how do we look here? A little bit better. I'm going to still go down one level, though, because I want Kwa Jai to get positive public order. Okay, 3,000 population growth, 3,000, 3,000, 2,000. And we'll just keep starving them out. Time to pick a reform. Oh, my goodness. And now we have another 15% campaign movement range. Wow. Like, oh, my gosh. The amount of distance we are going to be able to cover here, no vassal ship, is going to help us so much. We are going to be able to move like 150% farther than most of the AI factions, which is going to enable us to not only outrun them, but outrun them and set up ambushes, flee farther than they can maybe pursue. I mean, the ramifications of how this is going to affect our military abilities throughout this campaign is, it's just incredible. It's incredible. Wen Shao signed a peace treaty with Gang Sunzan. Wen Shao signed a peace treaty with Liu Bei. Li Li signed peace treaty with Liu Zhang. Li Li requested Jie Rong join their war against Cao Cao. Uh, so this one's like one turn away, two turns away. And now we've reached the cap on this. So it's time to increase our income. Uh, industry and peasantry. Yeah, we probably want to be focusing on industry here, right? Got the state workshops. No, wait, wait, hold on a sec. What's this? Ooh, mercenary captain recruitment charges. Oh, I, I guess captain retinues are kind of like the um, the yellow turban rebellion retinues. And I I think I've seen Winshaw 
with these captain retinues before somebody. Uh, plus 15% replenishment. I'm not thinking that we need that so much because you've already got the reform. Uh, so I'd really like to just boost income from industry. We're already got that. So 40% income from industry. That's if we want to sell lots of our excess food. Agriculture building construction cost reduction, 15%. Ah, tough. Something in here gives income to industry, right? Yeah, all of these do. Plus 500 income from peasantry. Wow. Upgrades garrison elite retinues to palace guard. I can only construct this building once faction wide. Whoa. Minus 20% corruption adjacent commanderies. So these cost the same, they give the same prestige. But one affects corruption in adjacent commanderies, the other one affects corruption in the local commandery. And then you've got like a 5% difference income from all sources. So I don't really have any idea which one of these is like better than the other, but this. I mean, you want this in your capital, right? I would imagine. Upgrades garrison elite retinues the palace guard uh but right now i don't think that's gonna you know get us what we really need if we build a palace a, a confucian temple everywhere then we can pretty much crank our taxes up which is always kind of fun income from peasantry here as well do we just not have a lot of boosts to income from industry with this faction because with Winshu, in my Winshu campaign, there's two buildings in here, I thought. All right, this is not looking so big. You know what? I'm thinking just the inn is probably better right now. So that was a long little um, dilly-dally in there looking at that stuff. Yeah, let's increase our food production. Is this already done? Yeah, we got a good garrison in there now. Laying siege there. We're only at war with that one faction. How many legendary campaigns are you only at war with like one teeny weeny faction and left alone to, you know, do whatever you want? <laughs> Almost never happens. Go away. Wen Shao vassalized Zhang Jai. Cao Cao signed peace with Zhang Jai. Liu Zhang signed peace treaty with Zhang Ba. Okay, none of that really affected us too much. Traits gained. Da Chiao is philanthropic. Should be just about ready to share expertise again. Uh, who are we going to give this to this time? Are we going to go back to. I think we're just going to give it to Sun Chuan again. Because we need uh, rank 5 commanders, I think. Uh, but he's also still going to be the one that we go this way to get the, um, the increased authority. Or... He 
He's a, is he unbreakable? Oh dear. I hate unbreakable. I don't want anybody with unbreakable. Uh, so we're going to go this way. Get the mighty knockback and charge speed. And then morale when attacking and battle running speed will be next. So that's going to be another plus eight. Putting him up to 137. Then he's only like one good title away from having enough to fulfill the Grandmaster condition. They refuse to leave. Uh, we have lots of food right now, so let's um, let's go find somebody who's gonna pay lots of money for this. We're looking for very rich and very poor. Those are the words I want to see. Fifty-five thousand. Wow. Poor and poor. Nineteen thousand and zero. Rich and equal. I could have been checking on this every single turn, but I didn't want to bog down the episode with this. So, I mean, if I was playing just by myself, a private campaign, I probably would. But for videos, I don't always try to do the most optimal thing because it would just take forever to make a single decision equal and very poor I mean we can give up three food which is like nothing probably get a couple thousand Okay, it looks like we're just going to get a lump sum here of a thousand. Uh, not even a thousand, but that's okay. Uh, let's go 985. Okay, I'll give up three food for that. And then I guess the other person that we should really keep an eye on is going to be Liu Bao, right? Because he has 55,000 in his piggy bank. I mean, I could, I could probably make so much money just, like, <laughs> here. You like these? I mean, look at that, 500 per turn. Just for selling these two crap ancillaries. I'm not going to abuse it like that. Um, I'll wait until he's short on food. In fact, if I were to ask for all the food, nah, it's not going to work. Okay. So we need to just keep an eye on him. And when he runs low on food, then he'll give us a nice hefty trade deal out of that. Uh, who came back from an assignment? I think we're going to throw you over into here. Because we're going to start upgrading Lu Jiang. Very quick. Like, I, I can't believe how well everything is played out here. So this would be 817. Oh, this is like dirt cheap. Now we're paying full price for the walls over here. 27, 817. Well, I value the walls more, so let's get the walls going. And then we just can't quite upgrade that yet. I'm not going to give that to you. I could get 500. I could get that amount per turn, giving it to Liu Bao, so... Poo-poo on out of here. <gasps> oh my goodness. 
Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Do you see it? Do you see it? Look at how weak her army is. What happened? What happened there? Why is her army so weak? Wen Shu signed peace treaty with Zhang Jiang. Ma Tang signed peace treaty with Liu Zhang. Yang Feng joined the coalition of Li Li. Liu Zhang declared war on Cao Cao. Liu Zhang is like on the west edge of the map. Cao Cao, I think, is north of us. So that's kind of a odd war declaration. Faction Regency. Regent Zhang Jinan. Okay. Oh. Another little thing here has been completed. At the start of your turn, have Sun Chuan be rank 5 or higher. And so all we need is for Lady Sun to finally come of age and we can boost her up and reduce penalty from desire for higher office for all characters. And a farmer to increase food production of the administered commandery. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I had wanted to get this before uh, the episode ends, but looking at the time, we're going to end this one here. When we come back in the next one, we will be taking Jianye and then very rapidly approaching on the small city and getting Sun Tse in place to take that and very possibly raising an army here, which is going to hurt our income return, so our taxes are probably going to be adjusted as well to pay for it. Uh, of course, now we can afford to uh, adjust our taxes because we have good public order everywhere. Only providing 3,000 population growth, but hey, you know what? I'll take it, whatever I can get. Whatever I can get. Let me know if you're enjoying the videos and the series with comments or thumbs up if you desire. If not, that's cool too. I hope to see you next time. I'm enjoying this. This is really great. I love this campaign so far. It's, it's going spectacular, and I hope you feel the same way. And until the next one, you just take care of yourself and have a good afternoon. Take care.